Okay, I'm going to share my screen uh, in a minute here, but um, I guess for those who don't know me, my name is Bill Hockaday. I'm a professor in the Department of Geosciences at Baylor. Um, I've been at Baylor for 10 years, so I'm a little bit removed from my postdoc years, but not so far removed that I don't uh, remember what it's like to be a postdoc. Um, and my, I did a postdoc experience at Rice University. So perhaps what's uh, similar to my postdoc experience, um, even though it was 10 years ago, is that I was a postdoc during the um, 2008 economic downturn, which probably not too different from the job market that um, students who are postdocs now will be entering when they're finished with a postdoc. Um, so these are just some things that I wish I knew as a postdoc. Uh, there's no other stage of your career where you'll have as much time or as much mercy uh, in the research enterprise. And what I mean by that is that postdoc, uh, postdoc is the, like the best time of your scientific career in terms of having the fewest amount of other obligations. You can focus all or most of your time on research and uh, most postdoc positions don't require teaching. So you don't have to take, you know, my, my job, I have to spend 40 of my time, forty percent of my time teaching. And that's just not the case when you're a postdoc. What I mean by mercy is that there's, uh, there's a lot of room for failure when you're a postdoc. The, the stakes are kind of low in terms of trying something new, you know, writing a proposal and it not getting funded or writing a paper and having it get rejected and need to be revised uh, multiple times. You just don't have as much time or room for failure once you start a, a tenure track or a research position. And so uh, my advice would be to commit just tons of time and energy to gaining skill and currency in the research enterprise. And what I mean by skill uh, is the, are the things that you took this postdoc to learn, you know, new skills in the lab or in the field or modeling, whatever the case may be, those kinds of research skills, but currency in the research enterprise just boils down to your publications and your grants. Um, those are the currencies uh, in the job market that you'll be entering after postdoc. So my suggestion is to go big on both of these, in both of these areas. In publications, what I mean by go big is aim for a high impact paper, um, something that will uh, catch the attention of interviewers, uh, and potential employers, um, or another way to do that is to write a review paper. Um, this is something that happened to me when I was a postdoc. I was invited to co-author a review paper uh, with, with someone who's really highly regarded in my field. And now that paper has uh, well over 2000 citations. Uh, and so that put my name out there in a really big way. Uh, and that's what you want as a postdoc. So write a big review paper, a literature review, or try to publish a high impact paper. In terms of grants, um, going big to me means um, get yourself uh, a, as a, a co-PI position on a, on a major federal research grant, uh, might be, or state research grant, but these are the gold standard in, uh, in academia. So NSF, NIH, DOE, those types of research proposals. And even if they're unsuccessful, which they are 90% of the time, it's just a really good experience. Um, and you can put that on your resume that you're co-PI on a big grant. Uh, the other thing I would suggest is to just get under the hood of the research enterprise. Ways to do that are um, just to write to um, a program officer at one of those funding agencies or um, a journal editor and volunteer yourself to be a reviewer, an ad hoc reviewer or a peer reviewer on a paper. Um, they need you. Uh, they value um, your expertise. As a newly minted PhD student, you've got the 
latest and greatest skills and they're going to value those skills. And the reality is that the more papers you see pre-publication and the more proposals you see and review, the better papers and proposals you will write uh, as a co-PI uh, or as an author. And these people, the journal editors and associated uh, associate editors, as well as program officers at funding agencies have just tremendous professional networks. They know everybody and they know who's hiring faculty. And these people are often um, great allies uh, to you professionally. If they know you, um, that is a good thing. Um, say yes often as a postdoc. You'll never have more time for a collaboration and collaboration is rarely a waste of time. Um, by now in your career, you can uh, have a sense for uh, who you might not want to collaborate with and that's fine. But um, if that's not the case, collaborations with people that you value professionally are rarely a waste of time. They usually result in some kind of product that's meaningful and beneficial. So just think twice about saying no to an advisor or a colleague or a journal editor or a program officer if they ask you to collaborate on something. All right, just a few words on job getting. Um, I clipped this out of last week's um, Science Magazine. It shows um, this year in terms of the number of job postings that have been listed at least up until October 16th or the beginning of October, and it's pretty dismal. Uh, so <laughs> I'm sure you are all well aware of that, but um, those are the data. Uh, so the reality is that getting a job depends on, I think, these four things. Uh, who you know, so it comes down to your professional network, your skills and currencies, so your publications and your grants, and then uh, those are the things, the two things that are within your control. There are two other things that are not within your control, and those are the fit of the job to your skills and currencies and luck. Um, and even though there are so few jobs being advertised right now, um, I, I wouldn't be discouraged by that because the reality is that you don't need a lot of jobs. You only need one job. You're one person. You can only take. You can only accept one job, so it just takes one. Um, when I was interviewing, I remember being a little worried uh, when I first went on the job market. I was interviewing for faculty positions, and I didn't get a lot of interviews. But the interviews I got were really great. Uh, they were all good jobs, and the reality is that it wouldn't have mattered if I'd had a lot of job offers because really only need one job offer. Uh, so apply early. The reason you want to apply early for faculty jobs and research positions is that search committees do not wait. Uh, there's, a, there's a window in which you can apply, a time window, and um, they never wait till the window closes to start interviewing and making offers. And so you should not wait until the window closes. Uh, to send in your application. All applications have three basic parts to them, a research plan, a teaching plan, and a curriculum vita. You can write these now, you should write them now and get feedback on them. You know, share them with your mentors and get feedback. Baylor has great resources uh, to help you develop all three of these pieces of your job application. So for the research plan, I recommend just going to one of these workshops that are hosted by the OVPR uh, on grant writing. They're outstanding. They have workshops on NSF, NIH, career, and maybe others now. They're held in January and postdocs, I believe, can register for those free of cost. Um, for your teaching plan, Baylor has something called the Academy for Teaching and Learning that has monthly workshops. They have workshops on pedagogy, course development, and class management. Um, so go to these workshops, and then as soon as you're done, write down some notes and, um, and turn that into your, your teaching plan or your uh, teaching philosophy statement. 
the Vita and the resume in the interview, um, Baylor has something called Prof, Preparing Our Future Faculty, and they have sessions specifically on uh, writing and getting feedback on your Vita or your resume, and also they have mock interviews. Um, those are perfect. I just recommend starting them immediately, attending those kinds of things. And those are the those are the main things that I wanted to share with you guys today. If you have questions, I'll uh, be happy to answer questions. I think when it comes to academic positions, you want to look pretty closely at how that time is allocated. A lot of a lot of positions will say, you know, this is fifty percent research, this is and fifty percent teaching or something like that. Um, and you, it might be difficult to get a, a sense for what that means exactly unless you contact the search committee chair. Um, so most ads will have an email address at the bottom where uh, it's a contact person you can address questions to. You might wanna just write to that person and um, and ask them some questions like, um, how many courses per year are expected? What kinds of courses need to be taught in your department? Um, because they will have a specific need. And if you can address that specific need, like in your teaching statement, for example, say, I'm interested in teaching the course on um, oceanography. And, um, and if that corresponds to a a course that they specifically need taught in their department, then that would be a way to demonstrate your fit. Um, but uh, you, can, you can ask those questions in the interview for sure, and those would be great questions for an interview. But um, if you need to demonstrate fit in the application, then you just, the only recourse is to contact someone who's really familiar with the search. I think none of this stuff is like, earth shattering, but um, I think one, one of the things that I had in my head, a misconception that I had in my mind when I started my postdoc was that, um, that two years was a long time, <laughs> uh, a postdoc position, like I had plenty of time and that's just not the case. You need to like hit the ground running right away with um, uh, working on proposals and getting papers out out the door. Um, that is helpful both to you uh, in terms of putting products on your CV, but it's also really helpful to your advisor, your postdoc mentor. They need those things, um, papers and proposals to get out quickly. And so you don't want to spend a lot of time, like maybe not more than four to six months learning the skills before you start uh, shifting focus to the currencies of papers and proposals. That is a good question too. I, one of the things that um, my postdoc mentor gave me the opportunity to do, and I'm really glad that she did, was to, um, to handle the lab's budget. Um, so when we got a grant proposal in, well, grant proposal funded, um, I, I, I was given the permission to work with our um, grant manager in our department, the person who is overseeing purchases and things like that um, and paying graduate students. And so the, I got to kind of sit behind the, uh, behind the console essentially uh, to see what, what were the line items in the budget? And of course I had helped develop the budget of the proposal because I was a co-PI, but, um, but then to be able to make purchases and see how all of that works, um, to buy all the supplies needed for the research, to make sure we had what we need in the lab, um, to make those purchases myself, place the orders and then reconcile the, you know, the credit card bill essentially. Um, that's all stuff that I have to do as a faculty position, as a faculty. And uh, I appreciate that I learned how to do it as a postdoc because it does take time. Um, so that's one thing um, that's good. I think you're expected to mentor graduate students in terms of teaching them skills. 
Um, so, so one of the reasons you're hired as a postdoc is because you have skills that the PI wants in their lab and they, they want you to transfer those skills to the graduate students and undergraduates. So um, just accept that and do a good job at it. And um, what will happen as a result of that is that you'll generate a whole bunch of colleagues who are graduate students currently, but will be postdocs in a few years from now and will be professors later. And you can continue to collaborate with those people if you develop good working relationships with them. Um, I think those are the two main things. So um, yeah, don't neglect your role as a mentor as a, when you're a postdoc. I think um, if you're a good mentor, the other thing that will happen is that the current graduate students will invite you to be a co-author co on their publications. If you um, demonstrate interest and you're helpful in the lab, um, naturally you'll become a co-author on some of their papers and that's also what you want. 